Hello, this is Chelsea Marks, and I'm here to film VETT 222 Task 15, which is perform a fecal float with centrifuga centrifugation. So I want to draw attention to our supplies here, which is a um, tongue depressor for feces collection, a vial for the centrifuge, a stick to stir the feces and the solution in, our patient sample, clearly labeled here, our fecosol material, and we're wearing our gloves, and our goggles, and our lab coat. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce about a quarter teaspoon of feces into the container here. Okay, so we're going to cap our sample here and move our feces down to the bottom of the vial. And then we're going to fill the vial about halfway up. And then using our stick, we're going to stir it and make it one homogeneous mixture here. So we're stirring until we have broken up all of the clumps. So we have a pretty good mixture there. Looks like all the clumps are broken up. So I'm going to go ahead and fill it almost all the way, about a half an inch from the top. So we have our sample full and about half an inch from the top. And we're going to take a little trip over here to our centrifuge. And we're going to go ahead and start filming here. So we have our um, balance tube here and our centrifuge tube here of sample. I'm going to go ahead and fill our centrifuge tube, the, balance, the counterbalance tube here, to match our feces sample. So we're going to go ahead and place them into the centrifuge. I'll show you here. So the samples are now in the centrifuge. And according to our manufacturer's recommendations, you want to run the samples um, at about uh, 1,500 RPMs. So we have that set here, 1,500. Um, we're going to run it for approximately three to four minutes. So we're going to turn the dial. We're going to turn the thing on, on low. And then we're going to turn it up to the five and down to the three. So it's going to go ahead and start spinning and we're going to come back to that when it's done and set it up. We have our um, sample that has been centrifuged. You can see the sediment down on the bottom. We just collected it out. We're going to go ahead and fill the sample again. Um, it's, it's about a half an inch from the top. So we're going to go ahead and fill it with more fecosol, creating a slight meniscus at the top. We're going to take a cover slip here. Oh, we lost our meniscus. We're going to take a cover slip and place it on that meniscus. So we're going to go ahead and set that on top. And we're going to let that sit for about 15 minutes. And if there are any ova um, in the sample, they're going to float to the top. Or at least that's the idea. So we're going to let this sit in um, a little rack, and we will be back at the microscope to read it. Our sample here that's been sitting for 15 minutes with the cover slip on top of it. And we're going to go ahead and transfer the cover slip over to our microscope slide here. So just slide that off and go ahead and set it on the microscope slide. I'm going to return my sample back over here to the rack. Okay, so now that I have my sample here placed on the microscope slide, we're going to go ahead and evaluate it. Starting by focusing in. Okay, so we're nice and focused. We're going to move to the 10x and go ahead and look for parasites here. Okay, so we're moving around, adjusting focus as we go. 
and I don't see anything right off the bat. But we're moving in a back and forth motion here, looking for anything that kind of jumps out. Not seeing anything just, oop, maybe I do. Oh, just a bubble. So sometimes bubbles look like ova and they're not actually um, anything in the sample. I'm still searching here, haven't found anything yet. So this is a feline sample that I'm looking at and um, kitten's been having some diarrhea. It actually had diarrhea in our exam room so we were able to collect a very fresh sample. Again, I'm just focusing as I go and going back and forth in a really controlled motion so I can see, going slow enough that I can see anything that's sticking out here. So I'm almost to the end here and I haven't seen anything yet. Okay, so we have reached the end and I don't see any ova right now. So we're going to go ahead and um, call this kitty negative for right now. Um, we're going to go ahead and talk about a few of the really um, common parasites that canines and felines can have um, in our area. We're in Oregon, so um, these are common all over the U.S., but um, specifically since we just looked at a feline sample, I'm going to go ahead and show you some feline um, isospora here. So this is a really common one here. This is isospora, um, aka coccidia. So we see that really, really often here um, with our shelter kitties. Um, they go ahead and treat at the shelter for it just prophylactically because we see it so often. It's very, very um, common. I'm going to go ahead and show you one more feline parasite here, which is the feline roundworm. So that Toxicara and Toxascaris these two here. So we do see those quite often as well. But again, the shelter go ahead, um, they go ahead and prophylactically deworm the kittens. So we don't see them as much as we used to, but um, these are quite common as well. So a few canine parasites that you're going to see. Um, most common um, hookworm in the U.S. here is um, the, let's see, um, Ancelostoma. So the smaller one here is uh, the most common hookworm. So you're going to see those in canine samples. And then down below here we have our another hookworm. And here is our Trichurus vulpus, which is a whipworm. So you're going to see those fairly commonly in um, the canine samples um, because they're just really prominent in the area. So those are a few of the canine and feline um, parasites that you're going to see um, with your fecal centrifugation. Um, with flotation, as long as you're using an appropriate uh, flotation medium that will um, allow the hookworms to, uh, the ova to float to the top. So that was VTT222, task 15.